For thousands of years prior to the beginning of the Dune Saga, the Sisterhood of the Bene Gesserit has honed the ability to access and navigate their ancestral genetic memories as they work to accomplish their clandestine agenda, seeking to control and guide all of human civilization. To successfully unlock and experience these memories requires intense mental and physical discipline achieved through years of specialized training. This is generally accomplished through a ritual involving the internal chemical transformation of an illuminating poison, which would raise oneself to a higher state of awareness. However, if the subject of this ritual is pregnant, her fetus would also be flooded with genetic memories, putting them at risk for ancestral possession, referred to as abomination. In this video, I'd like to discuss the concept of genetic memory as it is presented in Frank Herbert's Legendarium, how the terrible curse of ancestral possession occurs, and how it can be avoided. Spoiler warning if you are unfamiliar with Frank Herbert's Dune series. In Dune, the concept of other memory, or ancestral memory, is the notion that each individual's experiences are imprinted and hidden within their cells. This psychological data is then passed down genetically and remains dormant until it is awakened, typically through the ingesting of a normally lethal dose of an awareness spectrum narcotic. Generally, those who survive this experience have developed to the point of having certain mental barriers in place and have long established and realized their own psyche. Thus, it is easier for them to navigate the sea of ancestral personalities while holding firmly onto their own solid sense of self. For those who are pre-born, however, this is not the case. The first on-page example of a pre-born being in Frank Herbert's writings was Aaliyah Atreides, the second-born child of Lady Jessica. Under the care of the Fremen, she was in no immediate danger of the Bene Gesserit standing execution order for those with abomination. When Lady Jessica took part in the Water of Life ceremony, Aaliyah's fetal brain was bombarded and indelibly imprinted with countless ancestral personalities. Thus she became pre-born as the ego memories of her ancestors were allowed into her mind long before she ever developed her own identity. Over time, the chaos and clamor of these inner lives typically becomes too much for an unconditioned mind to handle, often resulting in insanity and total possession. It is established that the inner lives are divided into two groups, the malignant and the benign. The benign ego memories are consistent, controllable, and useful. On the other hand, after a considerable amount of time, the malignant personalities tend to unite within one powerful psyche as they seek to dominate their host, taking over both flesh and consciousness. In the case of Aaliyah Atreides, this malignant psyche was that of her maternal grandfather, the Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. While the Baron's possession of Aaliyah was not immediate, Given her lack of knowledge regarding the means to escape the threat of abomination, it was only a matter of time before the old Harkonnen ego took complete control. The key to avoiding ancestral possession was realized with the arrival of the next notable pre-born figures in the Dune Saga, Ganima and Leto Atreides II, the twin children of Paul and Cheney. In order to counteract the contraceptive secretly given to her by Paul's wife Irulan, Cheney began a special Fremen diet consisting of melange-rich food. These heightened levels of spice proved to awaken the twins' consciousness while they were still in the womb. Until that time, the Bene Gesserit had discovered no way to mitigate or avoid the fate of eventual ancestral possession of the preborn. In Aaliyah's case, it is said that fear was the primary culprit of her downfall that the Sisterhood's mythology of fear built upon fear had trapped Aaliyah. Partly, this fear was based on the fact that females were more prone to the inner assault of other memories. Aaliyah never held a hope of escaping abomination, and out of fear, she sought to resist the chaos of her inner lives. Aaliyah's failure to prevent possession makes it apparent that those who seek to defy their preborn nature are doomed to be overtaken by those malignant ego memories. Her resistance served only to fuel the fire of inner conflict, 
and by her own strength, she was forced to eliminate herself in order to avoid total possession. A major step in avoiding total ancestral possession is the realization of the fact that any who are pre-born exist as an amalgamation of the inner lives within. Therefore, one's acceptance and cooperation with those inner lives is essential. Sadly, it can be assumed that had Aaliyah been made to understand this principle, highlighting the hope to attain victory over these memories, she very well might have survived. A major factor in the twins' efforts to conquer their own abomination was the fact that they had each other to rely on as they attempted to come to terms with their pre-born nature and find a way to avoid Aaliyah's fate. As they grew up, they would often play a personality game together, wherein each would tap into and assume the identity of one of their ancestors. In the last of these sessions, Ganima became inhabited by the ego memory of her mother Cheney. This ego memory felt an almost irresistible pull of temptation and threatened to permanently maintain control of Ganima's flesh. After pleading and harsh rebukes from Leto II, the Cheney memory abdicated control. After this, Ganima continued waging an inner battle, negotiating with the image of her mother, who would eventually accept a guardian role, serving as the leader of the Mohalata, a partnership of benign ego memories acting to protect her mind from possession. A second major factor in avoiding ancestral possession was discovered after Ganima entered a deep form of hypnosis, seeking to condition her mind to believe that her brother had been killed. This hypnotic suppression proved to strengthen Ganima's own individual ego and created a barrier to safely separate her identity from the rest of the inner lives. Cheney served as a guardian in this barrier, careful to close the gate the moment that any malignant ego sought entry to her mind. Thus, Ganima was successful in escaping total possession. Leto II, however, did not escape abomination as cleanly as his sister. While Ganima was able to create a safe place for her own persona within her mind, Leto II was forced to balance and evenly distribute the possession of his being across the masses of inner lives. From early on, Leto had decided to embrace abomination, choosing to live as a structured composite of all his inner lives, giving every personality a seat at the table, including his own. To avoid the most malignant personalities, Leto chose a dominant helper, which was thrust upon him by the ego memory of his father, Paul. This helper was an ancient ancestor referred to as Haram, who served as the commander of Leto's ego memories. What keeps them unified is the Golden Path, a necessary future in which Leto would tyrannically rule over humanity for thousands of years. For this reason, Haram was chosen, as he himself was said to have fathered a multi-thousand-year dynasty ruling over a people who were bred to follow a god-king, much in the way the Imperium would be forced to follow Leto as the god-emperor throughout his enforced peace. Leto thus became a chorus of personality, a council of egos that allowed him to keep his sense of self intact. Over time, Leto would continue to develop the strength of his personality, so much so that he eventually came into a place of dominance over and was able to block out the inner lives. It appears that paths to avoiding the madness of ancestral possession can be found through acceptance, understanding, and bargaining with those ancestral lives that one has inherited. While being pre-born is a tremendous challenge, Ganima and Leto proved that over time, it can be managed and that Aaliyah's terrible fate could be avoided. In part, the ability to escape possession by the inner lives seems to be contingent on the collection of memories one has inherited, a significant advantage held by the twins that no doubt was vital to their success was the strength of their parents, Paul and Cheney, who guided and protected their children as they grappled with abomination. Ultimately, Frank Herbert uses other memory and the threat of ancestral possession to reinforce a core theme in his saga. By contrasting the fate of Aaliyah with the twins, we find yet another warning against giving in to fear and allowing it to prevent logical, wise decision-making. While Ganima and Leto II weren't without trepidation or anxiety, 
they never allowed themselves to give in to blind panic to be stopped from exploring and understanding their fears. Thus, in their own ways, they were able to escape the chaos of the preborn and avoided the terrible fate of total ancestral possession. But I'm curious to know what you think of the idea of genetic memory as presented in the Dune Saga. Is there a particular aspect of this concept that most intrigues you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.